ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Yes, welcome back. Sorry for the delay. I was trying to post it as I usually do on Facebook and uh, it just takes some time. So thank you for joining on Sports and Sorts episode 175. It is a Friday morning um, and we are going to, we're not sure. We're not sure how this is going to transpire, how, the, how things are going to play out in the future. But it's going to be either Friday or Saturday at around 10 a.m. Um, that we're going to be doing every week um, as well as Mondays, which has been the staple since we started. Mondays mm. around 10 a.m. Um, so uh, if you uh, like our videos, give us you know a little thumbs up. If you also would like to be notified when we go live, you know you can give us a you know subscribe to our channel and uh, click that little bell. If you click that bell, you will be notified when we go live. Um, you can also find us anywhere podcasts are played. You can go to www.sportsandsorts.libsyn.com. And of course, I am one of your hosts. My name is Shane. And I'm the Brian Man, brother, and it's WrestleMania weekend, dude. <laughs> That's right. We got a lot to talk about today. I will get into that in just one second. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Shane and the Brian Man. Also on Twitter at Shane and Brian Man, where we post all of our, you know, videos and our news, other newsworthy topics. Uh, and lastly, if you comment during the show, we will get it on the show. If you comment after the show, we will definitely respond. We definitely read the comments. Um, and today we are going to be talking about... The Joker trailer. We have some thoughts on that, I'm sure. Um, I, I'm interested to hear the, what, what Brian thinks about it. Actually, a buddy of our, a buddy, of, a buddy of ours, Chad Davis, was here a little while ago. I asked him if he liked the trailer. He said, "Yeah, he thought, he thought it's going to be good." Um, so uh, I'll be interested to see what the Brian man has to say. Um, mm -hmm. I uh, also watched the movie Venom. I might give my thoughts on finally. That a bit later. Finally, yeah, finally. Um, I actually watched it again the other night too because I think it's, it's I think it's in now. the HBO rotation yeah, or something. It's free now. So. I, I full disclosure, I really like that movie. I know it got completely trashed, but well, not by the I audience. Thought, the audience, no, not by it. the audience. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, media, yeah. media. You know, um, like a twenty critics did not. Like yeah. yeah, it's bad, but I really enjoyed it, and I love the inner it Venom made a voice. Buttload of, it made a buttload of money. I love the inner Venom voice too. Like it made me laugh almost every time. Every time Hungry. it said something, yeah, Hungry. right. Let it, um, let's let's bite their heads off. <laughs> Just like some of the things it said. Um, all right, so uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Yankees. Uh, we got the. Uh, hmm. we, uh, there was a question that popped up, and it's been popping up quite a bit due to one friend of ours um, mm, oh, about yes. Brian Cashman. Does he need to be fired? Um, we'll be talking about that, uh, and as yeah. well as Brian will be giving a a quick little. Uh, he'll, he'll be giving a preview to WrestleMania 35, and if he thinks you should be tuning in to watch it, so uh, we will give you uh, the reasons why you should watch, and he'll give you a little bit of preview of what's going to happen. So, all right, um, that's pretty much it for the preview. We got a great show. Let's go. You are listening to Sports and Sorts with Shane and the Brian Man. All right, so we have a lot to talk about. I want to get into the into the sports side of things first, and Play we will ball. start with the state of the Yankees. We're going to start with the Yankees. <laughs> they have not been playing well. Um, for there's several things that have been going on here. One is everybody is on the DL. <laughs> Nine guys. Everyone is on the DL. 
This is where I want to insert the uh, Ferris Bueller principle of it. nine times. <laughs> nine guys are on the DL. And it's not like bench players. Like no. half their lineup is practically Stanton, out. Tulo, Andujar. I mean, Severino, CC, DC, Severino, yeah, it's, Betances. It's a, it's a mess. It's a who's who. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, half the Hits. team is out. So I'm trying to like not be too hard on them. Mm-hmm. My big problem with this team, and they are now three and four. And I will admit they had a nice win yesterday. But even in yesterday's comeback win, there are still some things you can pick apart about this team. One. Not a great outing out of James Paxton. And frankly, these are the kind of teams that James Paxton needs to dominate. I mean, if, if James Paxton is your, your your number two, if you kind of see him that way, uh-huh. or even at worst is your three, because, you know, in a, I'm trying to think of it from a playoff perspective. Yeah. I see Paxton as a two because I'm guessing you want to break up the right-hander. So you go Seve one, Paxton two, Tanaka three. If you want to see Tanaka as your two, that's fine. I completely understand that on paper. That that makes sense to me. Tanaka's looked good through two starts. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm okay with that. But but I didn't love him yesterday. He wasn't great. I mean, he gives up three runs right in the first inning, immediately puts the team in a hole. And the other thing that I hate is even in the win, even in a comeback win, how did the Yankees score all their runs via the home run? No clutch situational two. I mean, yes, I shouldn't say that there weren't clutch hits. They, some of those, yes, the, the Glaber Torres home run, especially the, the three-run homer, to get to put them in the lead permanently yeah. was a clutch hit, without a doubt. But this team, when they get runners in scoring position, when they get guys on second or third with two outs, they very rarely come through. It is a disturbing trend. And it's a trend that's it's disturbing because it's continuing from last year. And, you know, the other part about this team that you hate, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I, I hate it. I don't care what Brian Cashman says. I don't care what he says about his this the talent within this right-handed lineup. If you are a Yankee team and you do not have at least, and I know that when Hicks comes back, he's a switch hitter so that, you know, he'll play into this. But if you don't have at least three to maybe even four lefty-handed hitters in that lineup, you're not doing yourself any favors. You are doing your you are doing yourself a major disservice when you consider the right field porch in Yankee Stadium. I mean, it's the uh, anti stick Michael. It really is. I mean, and stick, why stick would you want to do anything anti stick Michael? Do you know how many championships that guy was responsible for? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean that guy also signed Spike Owen. But I mean, yeah. all right. I mean, yeah. Well, we can pick everybody <laughs> apart. I mean, if you want to go tit for tat with you know bad signings, we yeah. can go up and down. We can, oh, there's we can a go ton. all day with Brian Cashman if you want. Wow. You know, I mean, for there's a lot more know, signings now. I mean, the free agency wasn't quite as much. Sure, as sure. It's, it's, a, it's a totally it's different, different thing. Different. It's sport. a totally it's a totally different thing. But. But this, this Yankee team, and I said it before, I said it last week after only three games, and now we're, what, seven games in? Mm-hmm. The problem I still have with this team is I just don't think they're that much different from last year. Aaron Boone is still doing Boone things. Boone gonna Boone. Boone-headed okay? moves. Yeah, he's still making those Boone-headed moves. Two, they still are, uh, they, they are still a completely, their offense is completely dictated. They live and die by the home run, which is very, very dangerous for any any team, especially if you're trying to make a long postseason run. My brother and I were talking about this yesterday. We're like, how many home runs, like how many big home runs do you actually remember the Red Sox hitting in the postseason last year? Really wasn't their MO. That's not how they won ball games. Their, now their offense could beat you to death, and they did primarily win with their offense, but it wasn't because of the home run. Right. The Red Sox got big hit after big hit with two outs. Go back and look at it. It's an astonishing statistic. I think... Almost half of their runs scored in the postseason, I want to say, came in the clutch with two outs with like runners on second and third. Like That's how clutch the Red Sox were. This Yankee team is built for the home run. And in the postseason, that is not a recipe for success. You're, there's just a, the pitching is so good in the postseason that you're going to see teams like the Yankees strike out 18 times like they did the other day. 18 strikeouts. They that's struck out 18 times against what, the Tigers? That is that is abysmal. It's a lot. It's a lot. And look, and, the, and I, again, I will say the same thing about this. I think this team is not a lot different than the team that finished last year. They, they hit home runs, great. They strike out a lot. They do not particularly hit in the clutch. They're, 
Pitching rotation got a little bit better, but would I dare put it past the Red Sox or the Astros? No, not in the not in the long term. Absolutely, not. I know the Red Sox are playing horribly right now, but I feel like their biggest issue is their starting pitching, and I feel like that will get straightened out. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing is the offense. I just, you know we heard so much about how the offense got better this off season. I don't see that. I still see a ton of holes in this lineup. And again, I see a mostly right-handed lineup in a, t- in a where you're playing the majority of your games in a stadium where you should be trying to get left-handed hitters, not even necessarily power hitters, because you don't have to actually be a power hitter to hit home runs in Yankee Stadium. Mm-hmm. But, but not even so much just for the home run thing, just for balance in the lineup. And then the other thing is the bullpen either stayed the same or got slightly better. So how did the team really improve over last year? And again, you still got Boone. You still got Boone making Boone moves. He's clearly showing you that in his sophomore season, it doesn't look like there's a lot of improvements over what he was last year. And I I am a three and four start. It probably could be worse, but especially the injuries. But I still don't think that no matter what, this team is going to win their fair share of games. We know that. But no matter what, I still don't think that this team is built for a long run in the postseason. I just don't. Yeah, I mean, I. as far as the Yankees go right now, they're not playing good ball. They do. Everybody's on the DL. I, I, so I can't really give them... It's, it's tough for me to say much about them at all. Well, there's a couple of things that I that I've kind of noticed over the last couple of games, last, you know, over the last several games. They, that's about how many they played. One is that I was right about... Glaber Torres not being able to play short because he has zero range. Um, he has Jeter at the end of Jeter's career range at shortstop. It's bad. Um, which I, I was, I wasn't that shocked about because, you know, I kind of noticed it when he played second last year. Like he has, I would say, average range for a second baseman, which is why I wanted DJ LeMahieu to come over and play second because second, he's a better second baseman overall and that's yada yada. And I thought that Glaber would be better at third because more just quick motions. He doesn't have to do, he doesn't have to have run far distances to make plays. It's, it's a much, you know, it's a much more fast twitch, you know, uh, position than, in, than second and third. I mean, second and short. So I, I would rather have him at third, but, you know, obviously they have Andujar and, you know, Andujar is hurt right now. So I would, I would have thought they would have moved him over and, and done that, but of course, Tulo got hurt. So therefore, now they need somebody at shortstop. Now, no one could have seen that one coming, right? I would have much been, I would have been much happier to move DJ LeMahieu over to shortstop because I don't know if he has the arm strength, but he's a better fielder, and you need your best fielder at your sure. most important spot, um, mm-hmm. and particularly if he can handle the load with his arm. And I think he could. He is a professional baseball player. He can turn double plays. He's got a strong enough arm. Um, it's not, I mean, it's not like Gabe Glaber Torres has got a cannon. So um, it, whatever. It, it is what it is. I, I've been, I, I just, I want to see Glaber get put in the spot that he needs to get put in. And it seems like there's just some kind of oversight there. I don't know if yeah. it's Boone, Cashman, upper management, whoever. I don't know what's going on, but it's there. But then the other thing is Voight. Voight, I am fine with him playing a little. He is not an everyday player. He is not. He's he, Shane Spencer. He's he, Shane Spencer. He's better than Shane Spencer with the bat. He is a much better bat than Shane well, Spencer. Well, I will never say that unless you show me he goes on a run like Shane Spencer did in 98 in the postseason. He did then it last I'll, year. Then I'll, and half the at-bats. Yeah, but he didn't win a World Series. No, but it, 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 that doesn't. Who cares? I, I don't. That's that's too much. That's you can't say, you can't say that. See, you're, I your lost head, my headset over there. Your headphones I mean, are even goes, confused. That statement to me. I it, care. That, I care about World Series. I care about World Series too, but it's not. I'm talking about the talent of Shane Spencer. His talent is not as much as 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 Voight is. Luke Voigt has a better bat. He is a better hitter. I think Shane it's Spencer. I think it's pretty relative. I would say um, it's pretty relative. He's a better hitter than Shane Spencer, but he is a worse defender. And Shane Spencer wasn't a very good defender. Defender. So it's kind of like you know, it's not apples and apples, but it's apples and oranges. But it's about as close as a hybrid of an apple and orange as you can get. Because if you compare the two players, they probably are the same. Because Luke Voigt's a better hitter, Shane Spencer is a better defender, but they're both not that far off from each other. So mm. it's. I just, he is a guy that 
can't play first on a regular basis. He can't play the outfield. He could DH while Giancarlo Stanton is out. He could be the DH, but that's it. So you need, like you said, left hand. He's in the line. A lot. You keep Greg Bird in there. I don't care if it's a lefty or a righty. Seems like Greg Bird hits lefties okay. Seems like he's always hitting that home run against a lefty late in a game. So you might as well just keep him in there and let him see if he can do it. So keep him there. Have Luke Voigt bat. Don't have Luke Voigt bat in the third, fourth, or fifth hole. You have to bat him like sixth or seventh so he gets more fastballs. He's not a great hitter. He is a good hitter that will probably get on streaks where he hits several home runs in a few weeks. Yeah, um, he, sure. That is but, absolutely. But, so but he's so strong that he can run into some by accident. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He's, just, he's got that and country strong kind of build. He doesn't and, mind taking the ball opposite field, all that. So it's fine. Like he is fine, but he's not a starter. But right now, yeah. he should be your DH and your DH only. And if you are going to, if you're going to separate him at all, you want to split the DH role with him and not really put him in the, in the infield at all. You don't want him anywhere on the field. That's how bad of a defender he is. So he's very, I mean, there's just, he's not limber. And at first base, you have to be, you have to be limber and you have to be I everywhere. Mean, I mean, the only place that he could possibly play would be right field, but there's no way he's playing right field. No, I could see him having a Jose Canseco bounce on head off. Oh yeah. Bounce off his head and go out of, out of the park. He's yeah. just not a gifted fielder he's just no. too big to play the field and yeah. that's unfortunate for him but that's just what he is uh, but anyway so overall this team and like they have a lot of injuries on you know, in the rotation they have a lot of injuries just in general so i'm not gonna give too much flack but the the real question is is should brian cashman be fired all right this, this is i i i am on the side of no I, I don't think he should be fired. I think he gets at least this year and possibly another year to see how all this shakes out because he has all this young talent that he has traded for and worked with and whether he's going to part with it to get something else or whatever he's going to do with it, you need to see the plan shake out before you can just say peace out because this is like we said, is a totally different error than when Stick Michael was here. Stick Michael was here, he made moves, but it was like... it. It was subtle moves. I mean, he was 91 to 95 was he the general manager. He was 81 to 82 was he the general manager. Yes, he was in the background making a lot of moves. George Steinbrenner respected him tre tremendously. You know, there was a lot of – I'm sure he relied on, on him for a lot of interest. I, I'm he was sure a great he, scout. He was, he was just a great eye of talent. Like, he, yeah, he, 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 had, he was great at that. Yep. Now – That was a shtick. And, no pun intended. <laughs> um, and so – I just think you, it's tough to compare the two just based on the errors. Well, I'm not, I'm not trying then, to compare the and two. And then I, those, not, but I know that, guys. but I know that's where a lot of people go. That especially, especially fans that are 40 and older, they all remember Stick Michael and how much you know how great he was and how he changed the Yankee dynasty to what they were. Um, and well, but him and Bob Watson were such. Yeah, I mean, those those were the guys. Yeah, people forget about Bob Watson too. But Bob Watson helped lay the foundation for a dynasty, the likes of which we will probably not see right. again. It so, just doesn't seem likely, you know. So yeah, um, I mean, it's it's overall. I just think you can't you can't do it yet. It's a different time and a different era, and the, the, their analytics are used with every team now. Stick was all about. He liked analytics. Um, you know, he was one of the first that was very into that. And the unfortunate thing is everybody is in analytics now. Oh, yeah. Every single team has yep. teams of analytics, you know. Uh, Here's you know? So it's, it's, it's kind of tough to, to really compare the two because everybody's on board. It's like who is doing what's next. And right now, Cashman is trying to rebuild, get some younger talent, and then mix in some older talent. The problem is he hasn't right, found the right mix yet. And it's tougher now because – Everybody's signing people in the off season. You know, the Phillies just dropped a buttload of money in this mm -hmm. off season. Mm -hmm. The you know the the Marlins are dumping. The Tigers aren't doing much. The, the the Blue Jays are getting rid of everybody so they can start bringing up all their young talent. Mm -hmm. A lot of teams are doing some stranger things that they didn't really do before. And all these young players are getting extended. Like this is stuff that never happened ever, and it's changing. So it's tough to just say. You know, and I don't know how the Red Sox have had has had so, so much success over the last, I don't know, 15, 20 years, but they years. have, <clears throat> and it's fine. You know, they have also had some bright minds in there, you know, with Theo. Epstein sure they have. And sure. um, I, I, what's his name? Um, 
the the analytics genius. Uh, oh, Charrington? Did, no, ben, no, Ben Charrington, right? No, no the the uh, something James. Well, Charrington was their last GM after. It's not the, the, Brous, not the GM. Right? It's not the GM. It's the analytics guy, and I, yeah, I, I, don't I can't know remember the guy's name right now. I'm sure Tim. I'm sure Tim or Damien would know if they were listening. Yeah, I think I have I'm to not. Look. Um, but um, uh, well, now, and now they have Larusa in their front office too. The man who I believe is yes. the greatest manager of all time. Yes. Here's where I stand on Cashman, and I'll make this very quick. There was a time when I thought Joe Paseno, our friend was crazy every time he would send a text and say fire cashman and you've seen these texts a million times because yeah. they're usually one letter at a time so it's like really annoying <laughs> get like you get like you get like you know 11 texts in a row f-i-r-e-c-a-s-h-m-a-n yes, exactly. and it's just like okay he's got good I, at it. they come rapid fire he, they do come rapid fire it's, it's impressive that he can fire off 11 of those before anybody else gets a word in <laughs> but but um here where i stand is i to me this is do or die year for Cashman. I'm not necessarily saying they have to win a World Series, mm -hmm. but I would say anything short of an LCS berth or maybe even a deep LCS run again like they did in 17 and or a World Series appearance, I would say anything short of that. But bottom line is if you end up where you did last year and you lose in the division series, I think it's time to move on. See, general managers, and, and, and you know, I'm starting to come around to the Joe Paseno line of thinking, which is that if you really want to boil it down, Brian Cashman, although he, yes, he's got many championship rings, technically he's really kind of only responsible for 09. And the truth about the 09 team is that you, I've said this before, you or I could have managed that team for a World Series title. They went out and they spent half a billion dollars on Teixeira, Burnett, and CC. You could say and, that about a lot of and, World Series teams, and, though. I'm not. I'm not taking. Feels. I'm not taking the credit away from him. But the truth of the matter is that team was still technically built on the core four. And those, by the way, those core four guys, they may have been older, but those four, those core four guys were incredibly responsive. Yeah. Very much played a huge role in that. Oh, not especially Pettit, Pettit who yeah. won every clinching game mm -hmm. in every one of those postseason series. Jeter hit like 300 again in the World Series. Shocking. Yeah. Uh, I don't even remember, you know, honestly, I don't even recall off the top of my head what Posada did in that series, but we all know Mariano was Mariano when he closed out, he closed out game six. Yep. And so that, that, that core four was still, they were, they weren't just like these old hangers on, they were productive parts of that team in the lineup and in the bullpen and in the starting rotation. And so you could say that Cashman, and I, I'm not going to take 09 away from him, but the ones before that, after Watson was gone, and really after Stick Michael was kind of more removed from things, I mean, you're talking about 98, 99, 2000. Yes, Brian Cashman was the general manager of those teams, but man, oh man, was he ever riding on the coattails of 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 the of a core, a big core that was that was put in front of him. In many ways, to me, it's sort of like Barry Switzer riding on Jimmy Johnson's coattails when you talk about that. So here's my thing with Brian Cashman. It's a prove-it year for him, big time, I believe. And if this team falls short of, again, I won't even say he's got to win a World Series, but he should, he should try, he should get there, and if he doesn't get there, he better get to the LCS, and it better be a deep LCS run, a bit, very similar to 17. But bottom line is, Brian, I think general managers sometimes are like, are like managers, Sometimes they just, you need to move on from one. Even Joe Torre, as great as he was, and as much as I loved him, it was time to move on. Maybe sometimes GMs run their course. The game passes them by. They get too old. Either way, it, may, it might be time. And I am coming around to Joe Paseno's line of thinking. That's all I can say. And now you're walking away from the show. Why are you walking away from your responsibilities? Was it something I said? I don't know what I said. Did I say something? I don't know what I said, but I said something. But Brian Cashman should be gone. He should be gone. I'm just not. I'm not feeling Brian Cashman anymore. And I do. I think that you have to sometimes recycle a GM every now and then. They just. It's like anything else. These guys run their course. And again, I go back to the way that Brian Cashman put this team together at the beginning of this season. And to me, I just. I saw. Uh, the only area I saw improvement in was an area where they were already strong in the bullpen. 
Their bullpen was already on paper the best bullpen in the game. He lost a couple of guys, but then he refortified it by, you know, bringing in a guy like an Adovino and the bullpen and, and bringing Zach Britton back. So the bullpen remained intact and remained very strong. But if you look at the lineup, you know, and you, you plug in, he plugs in all these, first of all, brings in, I don't know how many middle infielders a team needs, but I've never seen a team with more middle infielders on their roster. And as much as I like DJ LeMahieu, and he is a good contact hitter, and that was more of what the Yankees needed. The bottom line is he 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 over he overstocked at that position with more right-handed bats. And to me, he brought in Paxton, and that was a great move. But then beyond that, you know, he brought CeCe back, and, you know, he brought Hat back. And if you look at the Yankees rotation, although it was good at the beginning of the season on paper, there were still a lot of question marks. And I think the Yankees could have benefited maybe from a guy like Dallas Keuchel, who still remains unsigned. I would feel better about Keuchel being their fourth or fifth guy than I do about CeCe. I mean, CeCe could have a heart attack in the middle of a field in a mid-August game. I'm just saying, Brian Cashman, to me, made a lot of questionable decisions this year, and I think he is absolutely on the hot seat. All right. Well, like I said, I can't make a decision until at the end of this year. No, I agree with you. At the I earliest. Think, I, 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 and, wouldn't, I wouldn't either, but, but to I me. Could, I could very much easily see how you could give him another year. To me, he's under the microscope, for sure. Cool. All right. So um, that's pretty much our thoughts on that. And we're going to move on because, you know, we don't have a ton of time left. So I, no, I, I, I want to spend a little bit of time on WrestleMania. So, so I, had, I had some issues. I had to just leave Brian for a little bit and talk. Yeah, I noticed. With, I, I know you noticed. <laughs> my my so my Omnipod, which I'm a type one diabetic, for those that don't know, just started screaming at me. Beep like crazy. I don't know if you heard it or not. No. Um and it said system error, remove pod now. So I had to reach under my pants while so Brian man was talking. I had to get off camera, reach into my pants, and rip the pod off my leg. And then go and throw it in the trash because it was still making that noise. Beep. And I have to call customer service, customer support to, for some reason. So oh. I will do that at the end. But of you're, the you're, not di- you're not dying or anything. No. I, but then I had to go and make sure that I got my backup, you know, insulin pen so that I could oh. give myself some, in- all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. I'm, I mean, the worst thing that would happen is my blood sugar would go really, really high. Mm. And I'd get really uncomfortable. I'd get a headache and, you know, might do some damage to my kidneys and eyes. You know, things like that. So. Well, it might be good for the show, though. <laughs> Going low usually makes... <laughs> Going low is no fun. No. no. But it, I mean, it usually lends to some good stuff. I mean, I, I almost had to feed you hit chicken nuggets one day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's geez. how bad it was. Chicken nuggets don't really do much. And there's not many carbs no, but in I, chicken like, nuggets. I, but I the sauce... I practically had to hand feed them. The sauce. Me. You were just... A, that, was a, that was depressing. The <laughs> sauce was... That's the stuff. That's the stuff right there. You drink that <laughs> sauce. That's got a lot of sugar in it. <laughs> Yeah, you just good stuff. slurp it right up, right out of the right yeah. out of the little cups. I could do nice. that. That stuff's good, <laughs> but that's got the sugar in it. That's where the sugar is. Is in that sauce, that sweet and sour sauce. Mm. Oh, it's oh, it's good. I dip my fries in the. Oh yeah. Sauce. If you yeah. don't, you're a Nazi. I mean, that's, I can do. That's I can do. Bar- I mean, I'll, I'll dip them in the barbecue sauce too. But I actually, no. I think I almost. I don't even know what their barbecue sauce. sauce tastes like. I only get the sweet okay. and sour. That's okay. I only do sweet and sour there. That's it. Yeah. Sweet and sour. It's like I, I would. That's one of those sauces I would love for them to sell, and I oh, keep it in my fridge. That's how good that sauce is. But yeah. it goes so well with their nuggets. Just, all right, let's move on. All right, so let's get into uh, a little. Well, uh, let's talk about sorts. Let's get a little sorts action in. Where do you think you're going? I'm gonna sort it out. There we are. Um, Joker trailer. Uh, oh. yeah, mm. go ahead. Go ahead. Give me your thoughts. I would be, I'm, I'm interested to hear. What I will say. tell So when they first announced that this movie was happening, actually the, my first reaction was just sort of shake my head at it, at it all. Because I was like, man, DC is such a hot mess. They already have Jared Leto as yep. the Joker mm. in like one part of their universe. Mm. And now they're creating a completely new Joker movie that mm. is devoid of anything that's going on over there with suicide squad and all that stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, God, this is just going to be a mess. I mean, when I first heard Joaquin Phoenix, I love Joaquin Phoenix. I think he's a weirdo, free-spirited kind of guy, and he amuses me. Free-spirited? That whole, no, just a weirdo. 
He's definitely a weird dude. That whole thing that he did with that that I, I fell in love with him when he did that whole thing with Letterman. When he was just like when he was on the Letterman show mm-hmm. and he was just with the beard and the glasses and just totally silent. Yeah. And it was super awkward. I just thought that was hilarious. <laughs> um, but, but you know, listen, I, I, he's a great actor. So when he was cast, I was like, okay, I mean, that, that could be it a fits. very interesting choice. He's a good actor. Definitely fits. And, but I really still, I still got bogged down by this whole idea that DC is just tripping over itself. Like, just, they just don't know what to do. And I've kind of been holding on to that, even though I've sort of been semi-excited for this movie, because, again, I love Joaquin Phoenix, and I think he could be a guy that could really knock this role out of the park. Then I saw the trailer, and now I'm in I-can't-wait mode, because this movie, to me, looks spectacular. He looks perfect for it. Mm -hmm. His body is all skinny and gross and he looks just like nasty and Mm -hmm. emaciated which is kind of what you think the joker i mean really how he how he probably would look like without his shirt off and everything like and and he just is so he's the laugh is phenomenal he has nailed the joker laugh i mean really Really good, and it almost see in it, and you only kind of get it in like a couple of clips, but it seems relatively effortless. And as much as I still love Heath Ledger and Jack Nicholson, I still think they're great jokers, and they are they are great jokers. Um, their laughs were they were both very good, but they almost seemed I don't want to say forced, but they seemed like more effort had to come to, to create them. Whereas I'm hearing this this Joaquin Phoenix laugh and I'm like, this just sounds so perfect and like so natural almost coming out of him. Especially that scene in the subway where they're kicking the crap out of him and he's like lying on the ground and he's just laughing. It just, I was like, wow, that's the Joker like right there. I am very excited for this. He's got a lot. Don't get me wrong. He, there's a lot. There's a There's a big mountain for him to climb here because again, Joker has been one of those roles throughout the years that has been played by many a worthy individual and not just even in live action, even in animation. Mark Hamill is a tremendous Joker in animation. A lot so of people think he's the greatest Joker. There's a lot. I mean, yeah, exactly. Like there are people that make arguments for that. I'm still kind of on the Jack wagon, you know, but I also admit that Heath Ledger's performance was yeah. just for me. Other, it's, other for me it's Heath Ledger's hand down the best by know. far. Like it's not even close for me. But like even was. but even Caesar Romero has a great legacy yeah. as a Joker. It's a different, and, and, but it's yeah. yeah. I mean, it's so this is uh, you want to talk about like a big mountain to climb for a for an actor to take on a role that has been portrayed very well by many other individuals. Uh, but I think he's going to be up for the task. And th- to me, this movie and this sort of origin story looks very good. It looks dark. And, you know, I know DC has been accused of being maybe a little too dark, but this might be the kind of movie where that's very appropriate. Yeah. Um, but it looks great, and I'm very curious to see how it plays out and to see, like, the kind of... Gotham City seems to be a, a city, you know, as we all know, in a lot of pain and is just sort of corrupt and, and beaten down. And this looks like a great origin story to me. I, I, I'm, I'm very excited. So I watched this, and I was like, okay... I thought it was just okay. I thought the trailer was just okay. I didn't think the trailer was all that great. I thought it was kind of, I actually thought it was a little boring. Um, but I also, I thought that, you know, obviously his laugh, was, I thought was pretty good. I thought, you know, you know, his look was pretty good. I thought, you know, a lot of homages, like, you know, to his older look and all that. Stuff. It looked pretty good. And I have no doubt that the film will actually be pretty good to great. There is a chance that it could be great. I think it'll, at the worst case scenario, it'll be pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, my problem is, is that DC itself is just so incredibly confused. And not only that, they are confusing the casual fans, which are the people that actually spend all the money. Well, sure. You've got two jokers now at the same time. Well, yes, you have two jokers. And on top of that, and they're not related to that. There's just no right. and on correlation. Top of that, so now like you have these, these people probably like um a joker like that's not that's not jared Leto. like what 
Is right. this a standalone fit? Like, what is right. this? Is this? That's the other big confusion question. Is like, I so and I are think you that creating can... a new universe now? Are you going to have like right. these two universes running parallel to each other? Yeah, and I, like, and you know, they had because part... if this movie's a big hit, you know, they're going to make a bat. They're going to put Batman in it at some point. Well, this is the problem: is that I believe that kid that he went and grabbed the cheeks of. Yes, I believe that's Bruce Wayne. Oh, do you think so? Yeah. Maybe could be. So I that's my thought. Theory. That's my Good thought theory. on it is that that's Bruce Wayne. That's where he meets, meets him for the first time. Maybe um, you know all that. So I, <clears throat> obviously they're they're supposed to be a little bit closer in age, but you know it is what it is. And yeah, uh, um, know, there are sure. as many iterations where the Joker. You know they say like he's the person that killed his parents, and that's how it kind of all well in the Michael and, in the Michael Keaton one. Yeah. yeah so like there are iterations of that. So there is. We'll see how that all that all that transpires. But as far as this goes, I think I just have the biggest problem with the DC universe and them not being able. They're they're not helping themselves. They're shooting themselves criticism. in the foot. They're shooting themselves in the foot by doing this because now yeah, are they that. just getting rid of Jared Leto? Are they going to move on because Ben Affleck and possibly Henry Cavill? You know they're going to be gone. And, you know what are they going to do? Like it's a mess. What is going on? They just. I gr- granted this could be a really good film, but if it is, if this is a great film, why would Jared Leto want to come back? Right. I know. Like, like at that point in time, like now you're going to lose your Joker. You lost your Batman. You lost your, like you're lo- This is just such a, a and bad what, scenario. And, and may- maybe, maybe what happens is you transition away from the, prior universe and into this one and maybe the, maybe. maybe the old one just ends but, but I, do you really think that joaquin phoenix is going to want to keep doing this no. role no 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 he's no. A freaking i don't loon yeah yeah no, i don't see that i don't so see that i don't see because he i can imagine him wanting to be a guy who would never want to be typecast and he just doesn't seem uh, i can't even imagine he'll do him. one picture and he's on he's moving on yeah moving on yeah that's kind of how i see it too so maybe two at the most but yeah. i don't know he doesn't seem like a sequel guy to me. I don't know. He, he just, just doesn't. He doesn't seem like you can count on him kind of guy. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I mean, again, he's, he's a weirdo. A, he's a, he is out there. Yeah. He's as out there an individual as could be. He's so I don't know. Outrageously I, yeah. talented. This though. movie, th- I'm, I am not excited for it just because of all the confusions it's, it's, you know, causing for everyone. Cause I mean, for me, I knew it wasn't, I know it's a standalone film. That's what it's supposed to be. It's not supposed yeah. to be a part of the DCEU universe. It's not supposed right, to be. Right, right. But then uh, why do it? But that in and of itself is a curious decision. Like why do it? If you're going to do right. it, put it on Netflix or something. Like don't, right, don't right. do yeah, it that, in that movie theaters. Like at least it, then you have your own universe outside. Kind of right. like what the Marvel universe did with the Defenders and, you know, Daredevil yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Like do something. I still think DC that. does a great job with its TV shows and with their animation. That yeah. part they have shored up very well. And they have but done they, good movies. They, they, they just, yes, they, they all absolutely the ball have. Too. They just, but they dropped the ball in these, in, in the more recent years with, you know, with, with Justice League. Yeah, and they have obviously they haven't all been bad. I mean, we think I think Wonder Woman was great. I think you and I both think relatively highly of Aquaman, mm. and I, I think I, I thought Aquaman was, actually, was okay. I thought Wonder Man was good. Wonder Woman was good. I thought I Batman vs Superman great. was good. I, um, I right. think Man of Steel is great. I think yeah. uh, Justice League was we we, we both thought was a hot was mess. Garbage. Yeah, it was just it was a so, hot mess. Just terrible. But there was a lot Poorly of edited crap and... that happened in the background. You know, like Zack Snyder's. Uh, yeah, the there was. Child yes, child right. died. Yes, you know from yes. suicide was, and all that stuff. It's yeah. like there's a lot of stuff going a lot of on. Tragedy. And then Joss Whedon had to come in and take yeah. over, and it's just like he screwed things up. Just, and I like Joss Whedon, weird. but it was just bad. Yeah. Everything was a little weird. So I mean, it's just it's just that the, they're just really messing things up. You know, trying to force the humor and stuff like that. Yeah, just just do what you do. I don't know. All right, um, let's move on. Get out of that because um, I wanted to just touch on Venom real quick. Watched it. It was okay. I would like um, a I would like a rating from you, if you don't mind. Venom, a Venom rating. Yeah. Um, I'd probably get a five and a half out of ten. Uh, I think it's a forgettable movie. It's it's the animation in it was terrible. Like it was not good at all. Um, you know, like the the CG work that they did for Venom was not good. I thought it was actually better for Riot. Thought it looked better on him, but mm-hmm. overall, I just didn't think it looked great. And then on top of that. I think if you want a better version of this movie, you go watch Incredible Hulk with Edward Norton uh, because that is essentially a similar premise 
to this like and it's just a better done version i think the animate the cg looks better too and that was done several years ago um it's just i don't know how this movie made so much money it made a buttload of money at the movie theater um i do agree it was fun. i mean anything you slap that marvel tag on even if right. it's not in the mcu it's, it's it was it was it's fun, still gonna but like it made more money, money more money than the thor movies made like it's you know i mean it's, i think it made like a billion dollars it made a it, tremendous yeah, I amount think it of did. money. Yeah, no, it did. So, I mean, they're definitely making another one. So, There's no doubt about it. It's a, it, was, it was fine. It was just forgettable to me. Like, there was nothing that was going to make me want to, like, go back and watch it again. Like, I just, went, I, just recently watched, I, I just recently watched Iron Man 3 again. I kind of went through the whole franchise because I wanted to revisit those movies. Yeah. Because I really hated 2 and 3. I hated 2 a little bit less than I did originally. And I... Even watching Iron Man 3, I hated a little bit less than I did originally uh, after giving it some time to breathe, but mm. it's still not a great film. And, you know, like this too, like I just, I, I don't think I, this is going to grow on me. I do agree that the the Venom and Eddie Brock kind yeah. of personality clicked yeah, the, together. The vo- I just love the voice. Was okay. I like, the I, but voice. I, li- I, like, I like Hardy a lot. He's so good. Oh, he's I just, do too. I he's like really Hardy. good and he played the part role, but... He played it different throughout, which is a little strange. And I don't, you don't know if that's because Venom's kind of taking over. And, you know, so I, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. And I, I will watch the second well, one. Well, even before Venom. I'm glad I waited with this and Aquaman to wait until I rented them. Because even before been Venom, the you know, like, it, you know, becomes part of him, mm-hmm. he's still a really looks he just like Eddie Brock is a very I'm uncomfortable in my own skin kind of character like yeah. you know like like every time oh, I watched him I just wanted to start itching myself because something just didn't seem right but I think that was what I think that was I don't know what Eddie Brock is like in the comics I was not a huge Venom person by mm-hmm. any stretch so I don't know if that's kind of his MO but that's what Tom Hardy did with that character he made you yeah. uncomfortable watching him because he's so damn uncomfortable a little bit but yeah, I mean he's just that's kind of yeah, he has a good personality. He can still do, he thought can, he was. He can change. He's, he's good. I he's still good. thought I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. And maybe that's because I went into it thinking like, God, this is going to suck because these reviews were really bad. But I didn't hate it. I really didn't. Yeah, it was all right. I thought it was just okay. Um, all right. So, uh, but I, I did think the best part of the movie was the introduction of Carnage. Yeah. That. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Woody yeah. Harrelson. That was. Yes. Yes. I very like, good. I yeah. Yeah. That, so again, right you already there. know there's I want another that. sequel. Yeah. I want that. That's what I want. everybody who doesn't like Woody? Yeah. Everybody likes Woody. Who doesn't like a good Woody? Yeah. Harrelson. Toy Story 4 coming out soon. All right, let's go uh let's move on to what the Bry man has to because he has to talk about this. He oh, he would he to. would bite my face off. This is the Super Bowl Literally for wrestling fans. Bite my weekend. face off if he didn't. Well, let me tell you something, brother. All right. So I have a little something here that I have to play because if I don't, the Bry man will also bite my face off go ahead man ah oh, the original wrestlemania theme music ah oh, god that brings me back to my childhood so many great memories so this weekend wrestlemania 35 mm-hmm. 35 years of this. this has been most of my life mm-hmm. unbelievable Matt i, I want to know why people should tune in to watch this too that's what uh, i want to know well, I, I, all right, we'll get it. I'll, I'll get into that. Let me just give you some of the particulars. WrestleMania 35 this Sunday, 7 Eastern time on the WWE Network, live from MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. There are 16 matches, 16 matches on this card. 14 on the regular show, two on the kickoff show. The two kickoff show matches, I believe, are the men's and women's battle royals. Um, there are just a handful of matches that I really want to talk about of the 16 because I'm not getting into all 16 of these. <laughs> The biggest match of the night, and quite frankly to me, the most intriguing one and the only one that really truly matters. Well, eh, I shouldn't say that. There's to me there's really there's there's two that really really are intriguing. But number one, the winner take all main event for the first time ever. The women of the WWE are main eventing WrestleMania. Could not be more deserving. And honestly, if you had to just put a gun to my head and say, you get to only watch one match from this event, this is the match. This is the match because it's the Raw Women's Champion, Ronda Rousey, versus the SmackDown Women's Champion, Charlotte Flair, versus the man, Becky Lynch. And all I can tell you is, 
I don't care about any outcome of any other match. If the man does not walk out with both of those belts, that stadium is going to riot. They are going to bring down MetLife Stadium and 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 they will have to rebuild that joint if the man does not win that match. Because there's no good reason for her not to. She's been the hottest thing in wrestling for, since SummerSlam of last year. So you're going on almost a year. And this, to me, needs to be the culmination of that story. I, I still think they screwed a lot of this up. I don't think Charlotte should have been part of this match because she didn't need to be. Mm-hmm. But they made her part of the match, and so now it's on paper bigger than ever. And they put a belt on her just in time, so now it's winner take all. Why would you do all this if the if the climax of the story is not to have Becky Lynch, who has been the most popular wrestler, not the most popular female wrestler, the most popular wrestler since August. If the story is not to put these two titles on her, I don't know what Vince McMahon is doing. I really don't. So to me... That's the match of matches. It's the only match that really matters. The other, there are two other big matches that, you know, you know, for titles anyway. Uh, AJ, uh, excuse me, um, the Universal Championship match, Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins. Uh, I think it's pretty, I think it's fairly obvious here. By the way, I did want to make a prediction. Becky is going to win. She's going to win because she has to. So the man's going to close WrestleMania and the place will be hopping. I'll be half asleep, but whatever. It'll be great. Because um, it'll be midnight, no joke, when it happens. Um Universal Championship, Rollins is going to beat Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar is a part-timer, and the Raw title, um, as a result of injury, as a result of Roman Reigns getting cancer, his leukemia coming back last year, the the, 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 the Raw title has just been in such limbo for so long, and Brock Lesnar has been the, the guy who's kind of carried it, but he's a part-time wrestler. And I'm sorry, that's your flagship show. You need to have the title on a guy who's going to be there every week. Seth Rollins is that guy. Other big match, the WWE Championship. 11-year buildup for Kofi Kingston. He finally gets his chance, a real true one-on-one championship match against Daniel Bryan. Um, on paper, this may you may think like, okay, it's obvious. Kofi, this has been such a buildup for Kofi so many years. He's finally going to get there. To me, something's going to go haywire here, and Daniel Bryan is going to hold on to the belt. There's a couple of reasons why I think that. One, Daniel Bryan has just gotten himself back into being a championship kind of guy. And he is a top card kind of guy. And the other thing is he's made himself into a villain, but a really good villain and a kind of relatable villain. He sort of sees himself as this, like the belt isn't even gold anymore. It's a, it's a hemp belt because he sees himself as the planet's champion. And like, to me, one of the things that makes this shtick that he's doing so great is having that belt that hemp belt that looks like somebody made it by hand. It, it kind of keeps the storyline going and it's a kind of a good storyline actually. And I just, I don't know if I see it ending quickly. I could see one of those things where maybe they give Kofi the moment on Sunday and he wins, but then maybe loses it back to Daniel Bryan on Tuesday, just so they give Kofi the moment. Mm -hmm. But ultimately I don't know why I have a, because not every title changes hands at WrestleMania. That's one thing you got to be mindful of. And I just have a feeling that that Daniel Bryan's going to somehow retain. Maybe he cheats, kicks him in the balls. I don't know, something. Rowan gets involved and choke slams him or does that bear claw face slam or something. And yeah. maybe Daniel Bryan gets disqualified, something like that. Um, speaking of the immortal Hulk Hogan, he will be in attendance. Ooh. There are now start rumors starting to swirl that The Undertaker is going to be in town. So hopefully he shows up. John Cena will probably show up. I can't really imagine a WrestleMania without him couple other real quick matches i just want to mention aj styles versus randy orton my prediction aj styles wins the wwe women's tag team titles bailey and sasha the champions versus the iconics versus tamina and naya versus beth and natalia chances are natty uh, excuse me bailey and sasha will probably retain but i hope the iconics win triple h versus batista in a no holds barred match this is batista's last match and if, but if he beats Triple H, Triple H's career is over. My prediction for this match is that Batista wanted to go out on his own terms. Triple H will beat him because I don't think Triple H is completely done wrestling yet. Triple H beats Batista in Batista's last match, and we say goodbye to Batista forever, and go be Drax. Uh, I see title match, Lashley, Lashley versus the Demon Finn Balor. It's always entertaining when Finn Balor becomes takes on the Demon persona. He doesn't do it often, maybe once a year at the most. 
And I suspect that the demon Finn Balor will win back the Intercontinental title. Miz versus Shane in a false count anywhere match. No doubt to me, the Miz wins that. And then you got a bunch of other matches. Sadly, the one last match. The Miz is versus going to be, me? It's going to be it, a man on yeah. man? Like me? Shane, Shane O'Mac versus the Miz, yes. Me, the, yeah. Well, yeah. So it's me versus me. Yeah. US, there's two other ones real quick. U.S. title match, Samoa Joe, the champion versus Rey Mysterio. I think Samoa Joe retains the title. And lastly, Kurt Angle, <laughs> Kurt Angle in his farewell match, which will be sad, against Baron Corbin. There is zero doubt in my mind that Kurt Angle goes out a winner. And that Angle. is, and, and then like there's about seven other matches. So <laughs> should be interesting. Michael Che and Colin Jost of Saturday Night Live will be there. They will be part of the... Uh, Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, where I suspect Braun Strowman's going to beat the crap out of both of them because that's an angle that they've been building up over the last few weeks. And uh, so it has, uh, it, it's not that interesting, but it has some limited entertainment yeah. value. Oh, and that is the that is the tale of the tape for WrestleMania 35. I'm not entirely excited. It's not the most excited I've ever been for a WrestleMania by any stretch, but there are some intriguing matches. And again, if nothing else, the man needs to walk out with both titles fireworks going off that's how wrestlemania 35 needs to end if it doesn't vince is every bit the senile imbecile that i think he is so well, let's let hope me tell you something brother i hope as is always the case i'm wrong and vince <laughs> proves me wrong all right well that's pretty much it for our show today i want to thank you uh, for tuning in for watching listening however you took it in podcast and, you know watched it on youtube after the fact however you watched it thank you for watching it it is uh Time to go. We'll be back on Monday at around 10-ish a.m. And uh, you can find us on Twitter at Shane and Bryman. You can find us at Facebook at Facebook.com slash Shane and the Bryman. You can find us at our website at www.sportsandsorts.libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N, dot com. Mm-hmm. Find mm-hmm. me on Twitter at Einhorn is Finkel. You can find me on Twitter at the underscore Bry underscore man, brother. Brother. No, no, no. Just the underscore Bry underscore man. Brother. There's no brother in there. Yeah, there's no brother. You can find me on Twitter at Brother Jack Dude. <laughs> that would actually be a great Hulk Hogan Twitter handle. Brother Jack Dude. Brother Jack Dude. At Brother Jack Dude. <laughs> that might be my next I was one. actually listening to some some stuff like with like, you know, St- Stone Cold Steve Austin talking about Rick Rude and Rick Flair talking about Rick Rude, how Rick Rude beat the living crap out of uh the ultimate warrior one time in the oh, locker room really yes yeah no he was a rick rude was a bad man yeah it's a, i guess he was guess not hulk, a guy that you screwed around with i guess hulk hogan refused to wrestle him would uh, never wrestle him because understandable because he called him the tasmanian devil because he was just a nutcase like he, he would he, he was, was and he was like he was he was like dangerous <laughs> not oh, just was. A nutcase, but he was like dangerous like he could whoop you up <laughs> Yeah, I saw a clip the other day of some guy. This was, I think, when he was in WCW. And some jobber uh, gets in the ring with him. And I don't think this was supposed to happen. But, you know, Rick Rude goes to kick him in the gut to start the match. And the guy catches his boot, yeah. kind of holds it for a few seconds. And I don't think that was supposed to happen. And Rick Rude worked that guy over hard. Yeah. Like, you could see it was not – he was not pulling punches. It was not fake. He was hitting this guy hard yeah wow and that's the kind of guy rick rude was you did not dick around with him in the ring yeah but he was like supposedly like you know like smoke dope you know like that like they enjoy the occasional uh joint every once in a while not every once in a while a lot and he also was uh, fairly religious too which is you know <laughs> those things all go hand in hand <laughs> yeah right yeah, but like there was two two wrestlers i guess that hulk hogan wouldn't wrestle and it was uh vader and and Rick Rude, but he eventually ended up caving in to Vader. Well, he did cave to Vader because yeah. they wrestled quite a bit right. in WCW. Yeah. So they they he caved in and, and he had, uh, they had to they had yeah. to put those two together. It right. was a matchup too many people wanted. But to he, see. he would never wrestle Rick Rude because he was such a wild card. So yes, he was, yeah, so, and I, I you know what? In his defense, if there was one guy that I would have tried to avoid too, yeah. if I were in that career, it would have been Rick Rude. Yeah. But I, yeah, Absolutely. I guess I guess Rick Rude has like a, a wealth of knowledge as far as the wrestling goes and the business and everything like that. And you know, Stone Cold was always talking about like how him and Scott Hall, two guys who have had their demons, you know, oh, yeah. and they are just a wealth of knowledge in that industry, mm-hmm. which is yeah. shocking. You know, you would think of Scott Hall being because you know my my memories of him when he was 
at the end of Reza, his career. Reza Ramon? Yeah. Oh, or when he was just straight Scott Hall? At the end of his career, when he would come out, was coming out in WCW and he was drunk. And, you oh, know, yeah. All that stuff. Like, it, was oh, it was bad. It was and bad. then, like, you see him. He's lucky to be alive. Oh, yeah. I mean, I saw that, that uh, was it a documentary or something that, that was about him? I don't know if yeah. I saw it on YouTube or something like mm-hmm. that, but yep. it yep. was brutal. And I was like, wow, yeah. oh, he yeah. really did a lot of damage to himself. But he, seem, he seems like he's getting himself back, like he's gotten himself back into a more right, Healthier, right slight, of mind. Yeah, know, uh, although I do think he has occasional relapses, though. I'm sure. I mean, I, 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 it's... It's yeah. I think I think I think there's always a lot of eyes on him. Yeah, there should be a lot of gu- a lot of guys trying to keep an eye out for him. Probably Kevin Nash is one of them. I think. Mm, yeah, I mean he's, he's got a lot of friends for sure. Big sexy. Yeah, yeah. no, he does. All right, does. thanks for watching. We'll see you again on Monday. Hope you uh, stay classy, enjoy the Globe. Keep keep Enjoyed up watching the MLB. We'll be talking about all that stuff on Monday, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you then, 10 a.m. ish. Bye. Bye. <laughs> you are a real American. You fight for the right of every man. I do.